Supermicro Super Server, Xeon D Systems, got a new BIOS. 2.3 is now out. And we're gonna go ahead and have a look. Uh, I've got the IPMI out of band interface open here. And I'm gonna go ahead and shut down and restart this guy. And we'll have a look first at the settings at where they're at and what new options there might be going forward. So uh, let me bring up the product page here for the new BIOS. I'll show you that. And that's right there on the product page for the system. And we go into BIOS and there it is. 2.3 right embedded in the file name. All right, let's go back to the out of band management so you can see the machine rebooting. And looks like it's uh, just starting the reboot process. Now we have almost a minute here. All right, in a few more seconds, we should have the BIOS setup screen, hitting delete key. You can do it there, it says entering setup. You can use your virtual keyboard. If you don't get in here very often, just a little reminder, your virtual keyboard, you can hit delete there. All right, so we're at 2.1, as you can see right there. Now, what I do before I do an update like this, which is not very often, it's been a, was a year and a half at least since the last one, I just go through all the settings just to have a look at where I'm at. My machine does not have a GPU, and it also has an NVMe uh, bifurcation on, a um, 2 by M.2 PCIe riser card in there, an add-on card, AOC is what Supermicro calls it. So I'll just point that out, and I'll show you some of the settings. So I've got quiet boot disabled, um, restore and power loss. Some of those are just personal preference items. Okay, so here we've got bifurcation on. That's what allows me to see those two PCIe by four lane devices, two M.2 cards. And uh, I've got my OPROM uh, disabled. I don't have any um, boot from LAN capabilities on, just to speed up the boot a little bit. Oh, sorry, one more thing to show in there, and that is P VGA priority on board. Right? I don't have a GPU added. And I've got an article that covers these bias settings that I recommend. Secure boot menu I was messing around with a little at one point for Windows uh, 11, but I ended up using the system for ESXi anyway. All right, UEFI is my bias type. That's important to point out. And I'm booting off of a micro SD card at the moment. And that's on a SAN disk, as you can see, SDDR B531-2920. All right, so I made no changes in the BIOS. Now, I don't have to bail from here. I could just go right back to this menu. All right, so I launched IKVM from here, head on over to maintenance, and one of the many ways to do a BIOS update is through here. But I'm also going to say that once we get to the BIOS download page, we can go ahead and download that code. What I was also going to say is you can save these files onto a, a bootable USB drive. It's a, another way to go if you want. Okay, let's show that in folder. And when that zip is done downloading, there we go. Can extract that. All 
Okay, you'll see you have a bunch of files. And I'm going to put this in my path. So I'm just going to copy that to my clipboard to make it easier to navigate my way there. So really it's this uh, large file that we want. All right, so we've shown the whole process now. And I'm ready to head back here and choose file. And paste from my clipboard. Point to the 604 file. And let it rip. Now Supermicro sometimes recommends resetting all your BIOS settings to factory default. But honestly, with a large number of people out there with the same machine, it's pretty convenient if it leaves all the settings alone. So I'm going to give it a go and see how it goes uh, without resetting everything to factory default. Now it's taking quite a while. So if we have a look at performance in Windows, let's see. Okay, my machine's doing a uh, video render right now. It's kind of busy. But anyhow, uh, Ethernet. What's it doing? Not a whole lot there. It just finished sending the file. All right, so I do have an article about this. I'm going to bring it up on the screen now. Give me a moment. Okay, in this article I get into the BIOS updates and what's available and all that good stuff. And then I talk a little bit about the flash procedure. And right here I say, uncheck, but that's talking about IPMI. For the BIOS itself, yeah, I don't think I talked about that. All right, so I'm going to leave it alone. Um, so here's the existing date, 2.1, two years ago. We're uh, one day, <laughs> so tomorrow it'll be two years. And this one came out June, but I did not spot it published until just now when a commenter left an article on my page, that article you saw. Um, and that was just like a today. So I don't know what's going on there because I just checked about a week and a half or two ago to see if there's any new bias updates and there was nothing. All right, preserve ME region, preserve NVRAM. Well, most people can do defaults. I like to experiment and tinker and try things. Let's see if I just click on start upgrade with the machine powered on, do I end up with all my bias settings preserved? That would be kind of kind of nifty and handy. Remember I have bifurcation on, for instance. So if one of my drives disappears after a reboot, I'll know I'm back to factory defaults. But now we just wait a bit. I'll probably time lapse this section of the video and I got a clock going there for you in the bottom right. All right, finished. Uh, two, three minutes later, reset the system. So now we should be able to bounce right back and watch it reboot. There we go. Disconnection due to bias update. That's normal in the iKVM interface. So now we're in this out of band management interface. Let's just see what happens if I try to refresh it in the middle of this reboot. Makes us log in again. Go to the HTML5 IKVM. And we have a splash screen. So I already know we're at factory defaults. So did not save my settings. Oh, well, all the more reason to have good documentation on the settings that you do have. Heck, if you have Camtasia, go ahead and record like I did before you go messing around. That way you'll have a happy BIOS upgrade experience without losing time trying to reconstruct your settings, and trial and error, that kind of thing. So, At this point, there's no point in resetting to factory defaults because I already know it did. And one thing I do is that UEFI can be a little weird. It kind of can change the boot order and boot menus and all that. So I tend to go ahead and put myself into UEFI mode and then just hit F4 and reboot. That way I get clean results. So let me explain the boot menus, the options that are shown as bootable, all that stuff. It tends to make a less ambiguous experience as far as what device I'm picking for boot and all that. So maybe it's just tradition at this point. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have to go in and tweak all of those custom settings I have. So it's a good time for me to bring up my article.
most likely nothing will need to change here, but that's part of why I test to see if that's really the case. Okay, hitting delete key. I'm getting into the setup menu now. So we're going right to step six here. Advanced boot feature, quiet boot, I turn off. That's just a personal preference. I don't want to see the logo. And then power bunk, power function. I want to say push and hold it for four seconds. I want it very intentional. And restore on power loss, I tend to leave it off. If I have a power outage or something, I want to turn my servers on manually when I get power back in my home. All right, so that's what I do on this setting. Now we're going to head over to, oh, numlock, sorry. Shame on me, skipping a step. All right, next, I'm going to go to SATA configuration. But I do want to peek at all the other menu options to see if anything new showed up. So I'll, I can review this la video later to see if anything changed. All right, onward to SATA. On SATA, I go in and I change to SSDs for devices that I know are SSDs. These are huge drives, 10 terabyte, 18 terabyte, not SSD. But here's one, Samsung 850, it's definitely an SSD. All right, so I think we've finished that. So we have a super micro, SATA DOM, bunch of drives, Samsung 850, and everything else is just spinning drives. All right. Now the spin up. You can make, I can go ahead and enable that. Spread things out a little bit. Now there's no really not really such a thing for SSD, but so let me go back into SSDs and turn off spin up because that's a little cuckoo. There you go. So spin up on that one. All right. So here's where this stuff happens. This goes to four by four by four by four. Um, and I'm using that AOC card explained right here. Um, so I can leave the other settings alone at legacy, I believe. I am gonna turn off Pixie. And if you're using an Optane, um, actually I am, <laughs> I am using an Optane. So yeah, let me think about that. I guess the Optane, yeah, the Optane's NVMe, it's not going to show in here, but from the data stores under VMware ESXi, I want to make sure the Optane show in there. All right. And then finally VGA priority on board is fine. We already did the UFI thing. Let's just see what secure boot shows. Okay. Right, we're gonna leave that off. All right, so boot order, 
definitely want to pick the SanDisk here that has ES6i on it. Notice it shows UEFI. I don't actually want to boot off of any of this other stuff. And if I ever do want to boot off of something, I want to manually specify it with the uh, was it F12 during boot. So I tend to just disable. I don't want surprises where, I don't know, I insert a device that I'm going to use for a VMFS data store and it accidentally boots Windows off it or something because it's, it's previous use. So now it's super clear who's going to boot. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, save changes and reset. And that should be it. ESXi is now going to boot. Everything should be just hunky-dory. Um, something to keep in mind would be the uh, VMware Hardware Compatibility Guide. Let me explain. So I'm going to go to my website. Uh, why isn't that reboot going? Sorry. Huh. All right. So the IKVM screen froze up on me? Yeah, sure did. Moving left, right, escape, nothing works. Let's just close that, relaunch it. Okay. That's not good. Got a hard hang here. Um, that's weird. So I don't know what just happened. Guess I'll have to try a power reset, but did it save the BIOS settings? We don't really know, right? All right, let's see if requesting a power restart works. It seems to be working. All right, so it's just a little bit rough around the edge there as far as uh, saving changes and exiting. Now we need to see, is it in UEFI mode? If we don't see the Supermicro splash screen, it does mean it saved my settings. And then it'll just boot off of ESXi, ESXi and everything will be fine. So we'll have an answer on that to that in a few seconds. All right, so where I was was um, on TakeYourTry.com. I've clicked on vSphere 7, right? And here, these bundles are on the VCG list for the older BIOS 2.1, all right? So let's have a look here. I'm going to jump. Let's jump to the actual VMware Compatibility Guide web page. At this moment in time, on update 3, it still shows BIOS 2.1. So this BIOS has not been tested. Now on the left, it looks like we're in just great shape. Um, it's going to boot fine. Our splash screen with the Supermicro logo is missing, and it's now showing our BIOS level at boot time. And it's revision 2.3 in the upper right. So everything's looking great, but be aware of that support issue, potentially, with VMware. If you do try to call on support, and you have 2.3 and it hasn't been listed in VMware Compatibility Guide, in theory, they might not even open the ticket. Never mind, uh, help you troubleshoot your problem. So something to be aware of. Power cycling the system for a BIOS upgrade like this, I've never found to be necessary. Sometimes you're really supposed to do it for IPMI upgrades, by the way. All right. Looks like it did a second boot. That's normal. Um, kind of, sort of. Let's see, maybe it's re-recognized in the memory dims, the layout? I don't know. You'll see it do two boots. Sometimes if it's got to go back to factory defaults and fails to boot. I don't think that's the situation we're in here. But I am a little surprised to see it doing a second boot. So let's see if it boots off of ESXi this time around. Stay tuned. I'll probably, again, go ahead and do a little time lapse here and speed up this section for you. Briefly showed VMware hypervisor recovery, which is a little weird. Okay, looks like it booted up just fine. The speed was reasonable. A couple more things to try. I'm going to log into ESXi host client. I'm also going to check on my own web page here. Is that the latest version? So the way I do that is my easy update article. And uh, it's very 
popular link here is go right to the 7 article 7.0 section release notes here it is the build number ends in 247 this ends in 247 so sure looks like we're good to go now i'm going to launch my shortcut for the esxi host client which is basically chrome browser pointing straight to that esxi host client and everything looks fine um Update three is what shows here. Doesn't show there. Update three B right here. There's the profile. So we're good. Uh, you can see when it was originally updated or installed and then updated since then. Interesting. And then BIOS 2.3 showing up. Great. With that weird release date that's months ago, even though it really seems to only have been released to, to Supermicro's website very recently. So that's it. Looks like I have successfully updated this BIOS. Uh, only time will tell if I notice any you know, performance changes or anything like that, but uh, it feels like I'm just good to go at this point. Oh yeah, I told you store, just gonna look at. And there's the Optane drive. Cool. It's time for a IPMI upgrade. I already did my BIOS update. Uh, you'll see I've got a system here that's at BIOS version 2.3 and IPMI 3.88. But now I'm going to do IPMI, and this machine is back level slightly, 3.86. So let's go over here to the product page and have a look. IPMI is right here, and I've got an article about downloading and um, upgrading. So this video is intended to go with that article. Make sure to click on the link for the article for more details. All right, so I'm going to get started. I'm going to download this file. And I actually have a... Um, bias folder all right so yeah it looks like i've already downloaded but i'll go ahead and download it again that's fine show in folder all right the download is done okay, i'm going to go ahead and extract And all we need is one file, and that's this bin file, okay? Now, if we look in this folder, we can see uh, release notes as well. All right, so let's get this into the path. So I'm going to copy this to my clipboard. And we're kind of done with navigating my file system now. We're done with this as well. So the process for updating IPMI. We go to Maintenance, Firmware Update. That's it. So we're not doing a BIOS update. We're doing what's a firmware update. It doesn't actually say the word IPMI, but that is what it means. It warns me. Okay, go ahead and say yes to that. And we choose the file, paste from the clipboard, the path, and now we can point to the bin file and upload that firmware. Now, I do have an article about uh, BIOS upgrades. And actually I'm working on um, drafting this article that you're seeing right now, but it's not quite not quite ready yet. So let me just uh, let me show you this. Let's see. It's still uploading the file. Okay, what we have here is a warning for the IPMI procedure to uncheck all three boxes before clicking on Start Upgrade. And then when it's done, we're actually gonna unplug the power cord in the server. That is the best, ro most robust way to get this done. So we're gonna throw out IPMI settings, unfortunately. Start the upgrade. You'll see the before and after versions listed right there. We can close these other tabs to reduce confusion. And just uh, let it rip. So yeah, it's pretty easy. Um, now the machine I'm Updating is the machine I'm recording this video on, so I'm going to have a little problem with power cycling. I'm not really going to be able to show all that, but I'll just talk you through it. So soon um, I'll time lapse this and we'll be done. I'll be able to power off. Prompt to wait another minute, click OK, and wait some more until it says rebooting. Once the IPMI starts, OK. So my machine might start. Rebooting here, we'll see. Now, when I say the machine starts rebooting, I should say the IPMI portion of the machine 
starts rebooting. If I hit refresh here, probably does nothing. Okay, back to authenticating. And the splash screen here should show, there it is, 3.88, success. Very nice. Okay, so now I'm gonna to need to uh, power down. So at that point, at this point, I'm gonna um, stop recording the video since it's the machine again that I'm powering down. Um, after power, powering down or gracefully shutting down Windows 11, which is running in this machine, I'll unplug the power cord, waiting for about at least 15 seconds, like I see here in the instructions. Plug it back in, power it back up. If I had any IPMI custom settings, I could have restored that, but I didn't bother. I don't have any. So thanks for watching.